Welcome to season two, episode 33 of Fabrically Speaking Live. I'm your host, Claire Rowley, and today is uh, definitely a little bit of a disheveled start. Hopefully I can hear myself in a second because, yes, it's working. Because I don't have my ear on. And... I have something printing on the printer and apparently this this camera decided to be blurry uh, even though I set it up before we started. I almost didn't do the show today because of all the stuff going on in the news and and then I thought you probably also would like a distraction from what's going on so I didn't let you down and I gonna play with you today on uh, free motion I was actually thinking about opening up the the new machine that we're gonna be carrying but uh, you won't be able to see me move the dials and stuff so I still think it's something I better do recorded so how are you guys today (laughs) hi Tina Lorinda hi Lorinda it's been a while I think Anchor, this is easier. Well, I don't know how to pronounce your name. Maro is the last. So I printed out something. I printed out my koi and I thought I would wet it and see if it will transfer onto the fabric because I was gonna do that before. And if it turns out really well, then I will do some free motion and quilting through it and and it should be pr- kind of cool for you guys to know that you could immediately do that if you have a color printer at home. Sorry about that if that made noise. I really thought I had like 10 more minutes. <laughs> but I didn't. So, this is me not touched up and... I usually give you something to look at when I run away and get something. And if you're wondering if I made any more quilt blocks since last week, no, I have not. So, let's see. I'll give you these two things to look at and then see if that thing printed. And I can get my earpiece in so that I get my brain back. And I have no idea if this camera's in focus, so (laughs) we're going to find out. Oh, isn't that awesome? That's not too bad. Right on. So, let's see here. Like, even if you can't see me use the machine dials, I could still be using that new machine. So I hope I didn't bring you guys down by mentioning the news. Okay, well, I'm going to make it fun if I can, if I can here. And I got to put my little message in case somebody pops in. And they're probably going to go, well, this is kind of ugly. (laughs) I think I could get that in better focus. Not sure that improved anything. I have one more camera to check. So I'm going to check my close camera. That actually looks good. What do you know? Something I don't have to do. All right, I'll be right back, you guys.
I'm back. Let's see, I can put my earpiece in. I think I should put that camera on autofocus. It's so blurry. <laughs> I'm gonna do that really quick. <laughs> okay, <laughs> now we're starting. <laughs> Thank you for being patient and understanding you guys. So they didn't really print as bright as I would like, but today is whatever we get Thursday. Let's see if I have fabric ready. I'm like, well, we can do embroidery and quilting combined on this. And I, if I remember correctly, last time I was frustrated because the ink went into the item that I used to hold the ink onto the fabric. So I was going to use wax paper. I have freezer paper. That's worse, isn't it? Just gonna be a blurry camera day. I'm trying to see how focused that'll be. This is gonna be one of those, still have a little bruise left on my thumb. <laughs> putting something on the microphone and I'm going to get that camera to uh, focus. Going to give it one more try, you guys. Hold on one sec. Yay, that's better. <laughs> I thought I had it. And everything looked great before I started. It's the uh, Studio Gremlins. Okay, now I can plug my phone in so it doesn't go dead. There we go. So now we can just go... Take two. This is a uh, freezer paper, large scale freezer paper. And I'm gonna iron it to the back side, and then I'm going to use it on the top as well. So I can try to get the paper, the ink to stay on the fabric instead of going onto something else. So this is the right side. I love it when I see cutting jobs like this. This was one of those little frustrating moments and I just go, 
Do you guys ever cut miserably even though you, you know you shouldn't? This is like, should I go on or shouldn't I? If I'm gonna go on, I'm gonna do something that feeds my soul. And free motion and playing with the octubes definitely frees my soul. And I'm sorry if you're hearing the air conditioner because the brand new air conditioner is not working today. And it's 80 degrees inside of here. The lights increase the heat. So, one of those days. Have you guys ever used freezer paper before for your sewing and stabilizing your fabrics I'm sure that you're all gonna go yes of course that's old news that's just like old school stuff hi Cynthia and Ellen and Eve and Amber and Connie and Cynthia and Lorinda and I just can't make out your name. Well, hopefully my disheveled nature is not frustrating to you guys today. I've been working on my Singer Featherweight. I got the hook in and it came with a bobbin case and I go to put the bobbin case in and it fell apart. That was disappointing. So I tried to time the machine using my old bobbin case and it's been so many years since I was a sewing machine mechanic. I can't remember how to time. I mean, I know how to get the needle to hook timing in, but apparently whoever had this machine before had a gear, like go out of time, which is a little bit more complicated. I'm trying really hard to service it myself because I used to do it hundreds of featherweights it's easy for me one of the easiest machines to service there is especially since our we only have like one dealer in our area to service the entire area so if i send that in it's going to be i don't know a couple months probably before i get it back All right, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be backwards because I didn't flip the image. And I don't want it to move. So I'm going to pin it. Try not to burn that. So I'm just putting some pins in here to keep the paper from moving. Freezer paper has still not bonded to the fabric all the way, but it's really not that important. Put another pin over here. There we go. Now I'm gonna get this really wet. And this is just a regular, like it's a, I think it's 24 pound paper. Sure did get soaked through quick, didn't it? That should do it. There we go. I'm gonna put another piece of freezer paper on there. Backside down. You have a roll by your cutting station. 
on the freezer paper it does you want to put the wax side is kind of waterproof so it's going to stop the ink from getting to this to the paper because i used paper the last time as a pressing cloth and the ink went into the paper so there's nowhere for the ink to go but on the fabric or to get itself back on the original paper. And then I was thinking this would be great just to get an image down and then you could finish inking it with our inks. But today I'm just going to use whatever happens here. Yeah, if you shiny on, if you shine, <laughs> if you iron on the shiny side, the uh, iron will, well, let's, I'll just show you. Shiny side up. Where'd it go? <laughs> oh, no. Now, aren't you glad I did that for you? It's just wax. So it's not going to damage your iron. There's wax on there now, but now it's back. Now I'm going to put it on that paper. I don't know. It feels like it's dry already. I'm going to check the dryness by touching the other side. Ooh. That's the back side of the fabric. Isn't that cool, you guys? I think this is exciting, even though I can paint. To just be able to do that so easily. <laughs> I have that song playing in my head. I'm so excited. I needed this. Tomorrow is gallery opening in Prescott if you're in the area and you want to go and one of my paintings was accepted in the in the show. And then I have some prints on for sale there as well. Not this one, but and it's the Mountain Artists Guild and I opened or created my Claire Rowley art Facebook page and Instagram. If you want to follow the art part of me. Hi, Amy. So Amy has one of the very first Kenmore sewing machines ever sold by Sears. And the reason I immediately first thing I thought was an American Flyer. Did you guys know there was a machine called an American Flyer? And then, uh, and then the second thought was Greist machine. And the Greist, Amy, is the only design that you can't attach the creative feet to. I may wet it one more time. Well, I pinned the paper, so I can't pin. Oh, there we go. That's the actual fabric right there, you guys. If I wet it again, I could even get more ink, I think. Something else. And I haven't had a chance to test this yet for color fastness. <laughs> the air conditioner is blowing my hair. So what, are, what is on your sewing table, you guys? I want to know. I was just meditating, trying to think of what I could teach today and 
feel like all I do is free motion. <laughs> and I don't want to, I don't want to be boring to people. Can I ever do too much free motion? Let me know. And then what it, what I use this for? Well, that's a, that could be different. What can we use this for? Wall art would be f cool, but making a bag out of this would be really cool. And quilt and embroider, and that's what I thought I'd do today, is show you how you can embroider and then take it out of the hoop and then quilt the rest of it. So we're gonna, we're inking without using a paintbrush. And we're gonna embroider and then free motion quilt if I have time. I may not have time to do all of it, we'll see. Mending, mending's not fun. <laughs> I guess it can be fun, especially when you know that you can use the octi hoops to mend. I do have a part of my YouTube channel. One of my playlists is called On The Mend. And I have, I think, three videos in there on mending. And one of them is really cool where you can take a lace dress and where it's all torn and put it back together again with the octi hoops. And, uh, and then there's one in there for spider webs. So you can make spider webs on a shirt for Halloween if you want to make a Halloween outfit. Well, pretty sure that there's no way that that ink is not going to be on the fabric now. Do a little more here. Still have that song playing in my head. I want I want the world to go back to what it was in 2018 or 2019. Anybody else like that? So I sit there and I tell you I'm going to have go out to a gallery and then I'm thinking, some of you are probably worried about me. I'll be wearing a mask. And I was thinking about actually making a new mask and using some of my art for the fabric. This is the mask design. So it's, it's not very big and there's three layers. So it's, it's like wearing three masks, but you can still breathe through it. I really thought I'd like that fabric on me, but I don't. And since it's a gallery showing, I feel like I should have an edgy mask. No limit to the free motion I can teach you? All right, I think that. Now we're on the actual paper. And I'm gonna push steam through. Because why not? Yeah. Pushing hard and pushing steam through. And here's the thing, the paper on the back side won't let that steam go through it. So it's pushing out toward me. So be careful if you do this. That's why my arms are up because the steam is shooting out from underneath the paper toward me. How to print on fabric. Wish I could read the little writing that's about three feet away from me better. Yeah, if you have to wear a mask, that design is pretty comfortable, isn't it, Tina? It's the second generation pattern that you're going to want in, uh, if you're going to make a mask. And you know, once masks are required in my town, it's pretty much everywhere. 2018. I should reveal it this way so you guys can see. 
So it's it's kind of an impression of it rather than it being an exact thing, which leaves the creative part to me. I doubt this would wash out. It's kind of like we get a, because ink is like you, you have a pen in your pocket and it leaks. Have any of you ever replaced the ink cartridge in your printer and had it get on your clothes and you never got it off? Of course, I am going to be printing this fabric so you'll have a high quality print of it. But I want to make other shapes to go with it so that this becomes a quilt project. I'll probably use spin flower to print my fabric. Give you an idea of the cost of it. What do you guys think? Is this cool? Thumbs up if you think it's cool. Come on. Remember, interacting makes YouTube think you're having fun with me. I think it's I think it's really neat that it goes through the fabric so it's on both sides. I mean, you could really use that for a garment as well. Wouldn't it be pretty to, to take pictures in your garden of a rose and, and put it on your shirt and then you have a flower on your shirt? Well, that's me not knowing something really interesting to say. So this is, this is the wrong side and this is the right side. Definitely easier to see the right side. So I could embroider the flower and maybe the lily pads and then quilt the fish or just embroider the flower and then do the fish and everything else as a quilt. What do you guys want to see more, embroidery or quilting? It's such a little version of it. I'm going to bring out the real thing. Now, had it printed better in the first place, I must not have had it on the best quality print. But you can see how much more vibrant the colors are on this. That is how vibrant the fabric will be that I offer you guys to buy. And I need this to kind of look at, since this is so subdued. Ta-da. I still think it's neat. All right, I'm going to need these to see the fine lines and details. I still haven't found my original glasses that I lost. Anybody's guess where I left them? Maybe Tinkerbell took them. So when we embroider with the Octi hoops, we use a stabilizer on the back of the hoop and it's called stick and tear. When you buy the Octahoops, you do get some already attached to the packaging, or it is part of your packaging. The card, there's a cardboard square, and it's wrapped around the cardboard square. Dropping 
The best bobbin thread to use for machine embroidery would be our lingerie thread. This is another thing you can do to have fun and print over fabric panels that already have print on them. And this was attached to the hoop. So you can see the parts that were embroidered have uh, the bobbin thread showing and the, these areas are void. So if I peel off all this stabilizer, then I could quilt in these voided areas. And that's kind of what we're gonna do today. I still plan on doing this with you guys once we got our stick and rinse back in, or I may just have this be a panel that you guys embroider through with me. Well, I'm trying to find my extra hoops. Where are they? Hoops come three sizes to the set. Oh, there it is. It was on the machine. Now, if I'm just going to embroider the flower, I certainly don't need the biggest hoop to embroider, and I'd waste the stabilizer if I did. So, it's also easier to control a smaller frame when you're learning. Did you guys vote? Am I only embroidering the flower? I read your comment, those darn fairies. And then I'm thinking, that'd be fun to do some fairies. <laughs> so this is the way the design is. If I had inked on the wrong side, I would have had, I think it would have been fine. I don't know, is the flower easier to see on one side versus the other? There's the eyeballs. There's the eyeballs. Except for that's the wrong side of the fabric, so. That's why we're going to do it this way. Is it the wrong side? How do we tell right side from wrong side? Go cross grain. And you stretch. This. Oh, it's the wrong side. So this is the wrong side. I actually did it right without knowing I did it right. Cool. Should I only embroider the flower? Hi, Brenda. You're lurking at work, Brenda? <laughs> I won't tell if you won't tell. This isn't the first time that that somebody has uh, said that they were watching from work. One time someone was driving and I said, you better not be the driver. She goes, okay, I'm not the driver. Kind of makes you think before getting on the road, huh? Some people are actually watching videos while they're driving. So this has a paper backing. The stabilizer itself is, is not paper. It's polyester fabric, non-woven, like an N95 mask. And this is the stabilizer that I use inside of my mask for, for the forward facing fabric. So what does it mean when you have a non-woven fabric? It means that there aren't little windows for the virus to go through. Like there is on the weave of a fabric where you have the weave of a fabric and it has 
if you stretch it, it kind of s expands and it can allow things to go through. Whereas this is a more of a, a solid almost. And so there aren't all these gaps. So I just figured, you know, maybe it would work. And turns out when I make your pressers, which tomorrow is I'm making pressers day. So if you are wanting to get one, it'd be good to order today and, uh, or by morning, because in the morning I will be making pressers. And I had, my sinuses would get really messed up every time I made a presser. The colored wood would end up in my sinuses. And after I made my mask, that stopped happening. And before I was using an N95 mask, and so all I can say is that, that's my science, my science experiment. So now I'm attaching this to the back side of the frame. And it's so dirty. It's got lots of lint on it. Just didn't want to use this brand new hoop. The bottom of our hoop has a special texture to it. Okay, lay it down and then rub it. Go to the opposite side and do that again. And then you just start rotating, lifting and turning. I got an email today from one of the customers on Creative Feet saying she got her hoops and she has fallen or she she got her hoops out and that she's fallen in love with her octa hoops. So that was a good way to start my morning. Do any of you feel like I do? I always feel like I feel like I love my octa hoops. They make me feel good. Want to see how the paper turned out? It, it like lost all of the blue color and it sent the blue color to the back. I bet if I printed this on a thinner paper or maybe if I printed this on freezer paper to begin with, that would skip a step, wouldn't it? So for it's kind of hard to cut freezer paper perfect to fit in your printer. So now I can just lay this down like that and I can color that should I embroider just the flower or should I do the lily pads and the flowers or should I just do whatever I feel like and you guys will just be here to play with me that's upside down for you guys too isn't it I definitely love this. This is one of my favorite things I've ever made. So that means I'm gonna do more. I was thinking about doing an above ocean and having the dolph having dolphins and other sea life from above like that and having the shadows cast down. What do you guys think? Would that be cool? I got shoes on. I do not sew with shoes. I have to take my shoes off. I think I'm gonna do a little bit of a lily pad. Problem is, this is a it's a lot. In order to make it look like it did on here, it would require lots of colors of green, and that will make me take longer. All right, this could just be an embroidery free motion and no quilting at all. The fish definitely don't have very much definition.
I got a microphone in my face. Kind of looks like a Monet painting. Impressionistic art. It's not something I'm very good at, impressionism. So if I do both of those lily pads, you have the ability to move it around until you get it positioned just the way you want. And I want to make it so I can get to the to the lily pad without hitting the frame with my needle. There we go. I'm going to use an 80-12 super non-stick needle. It's really, I, I shouldn't say that, it's super universal with a non-stick coating. And the reason I've chosen to do that is this is such a thin fabric. It's only one layer. It has a unique front that helps the thread drop into the hole, into the eye of the needle. So I checked my messages in the school, Create with Claire Rowley, which is at create.clairowley.com. If you haven't joined yet, it's a free school. And one of the students said she needed help because she couldn't figure out how to get this looping on the bottom to go away. And there are several reasons why you would have that happen. This has invisible thread in the bobbin. I don't remember what I was doing last time. I was playing with you guys last time I used the machine, so I used invisible thread. I don't remember why. And this is the lingerie thread in the bobbin. is a nylon thread. So it kind of stretches when it goes through the bobbin tension and causes the, or it reduces the chance of your bobbin thread popping to the top. So if the top of your fabric looks bad, the stitches look sloppy, is it the needle thread causing that or is it the bobbin thread causing that? Do any of you know the answer? So the answer is, if it looks bad on the bottom, it's the top, and if it looks bad on the top, it's the bobbin. So your brain thinks the back looks bad. It must be the bobbin and you take the bobbin out, but you neglect to check the top and the top is where your problem lies. Now, there's several different ways that you can have that happen. If you thread your machine, especially using the octahubes because we're gonna use it without a foot. So with no foot there, your brain may think the foot's down when it's not. And if your foot is not down or the lever that holds your foot up allows you to lift it and, and lower your foot, if that is not up when you thread it, the tension discs are closed. So the thread will lay on the outside of the tension discs. And if your foot is up, it, they open and then that allows the thread to go in between the tension but if you don't then lower it then there's no tension holding the thread that is in between and on computerized machines it's really hard to leave your foot up because your machine will make a noise it'll beep at you well, I got all the sounds turned off on this so it's not making noise but it would normally go beep 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 but you could tell it's not letting me run the machine if this were a mechanical machine and I pushed on the pedal, it would just start running. It's kind of like, maybe I don't even have it plugged in. 
Okay, so I'm going to use a yellow for the center. And I didn't get a chance to pick my colors before. And I'm going to be doing the flower and so do I have a lot of pink in here? I don't. Do I? This is the Polyfast 9197. This would be like I, I did some intense outlines there, and that is 1087 and 9197. This one is ten twenty six. It's not really pink, that's peach. Don't I have a really light pink? Okay, so I'm going to start with the lighter color. I think I'll start with the center of it. And on a bigger piece, it would have been a lot easier to do this with lots of multiple colors. But I may just use one color yellow. We'll see. Aren't those beautiful? There's something about the way they make this thread that makes it so shiny. There is a little bit of a yellow in the lily pads as well. Where's my tweezers? We're almost completely sold out of all AppleQuick products. And one of my favorite things is the tweezers. They're my favorite so much that I carry them off a lot. <clears throat> I promised I wouldn't take them out of the room. I have another pair. I may have to turn my air conditioner down because if it blows the thread it can make my machine not function normally so if you ever sew and you use a ceiling fan you should have your ceiling fan pull the air up rather than push the air down and that will reduce the chance of your thread being blown around and getting caught on things especially if you use my thread dispenser because my thread dispenser when you bring the thread up through the eye hook and then over, it's just hanging out and the wind blows on it. Well, it can blow it over and get it caught on your bottom winder, which you've seen happen to me before. I got to reduce this air conditioner. Let's see if my air conditioner started working again. Nope. Whoopsie. Hi, it was blowing right on Tinkerbell, so I covered her with a blanket. So now she's not turning into a, a dogsicle. Or is that a popsicle? Okay, so I'm putting my thread on one of the vertical posts on the thread dispenser. And then going up through the eye hook. And since I have the fan blowing, I'm going to 
put it in my bobbin winder little spring. And then over here, so I'm using additional guides that I wouldn't normally do if I didn't have the wind blowing. When I'm at a show and there's lots of you guys around me, I use additional guides and I have been known to create my own guides by taping with painter's tape safety pens to different locations on the machine so that you can guide the thread through additional guides and that keeps the thread from misbehaving without grabbing the thread. So you can make threads like Floriani thread tends to shred a lot at the needle. So if you have it go through, go twice around a thread guide and into the machine, it makes it sew better. There's a hint for you. Other brands of threads that twist a lot will also perform better. When you have them go through a, a, a thread guide more than once. Let's see if my needle threader is going to work. Yay! Can't reach my hand wheel. Lingerie thread is nylon twisted thread. And it is available at creativefeet.com under nylon thread. You'll find the invisible thread, not to be confused with Invisifil. Invisible is a nylon, like a plastic feeling thread. And they're both nylon. So this is more of a fiber. This is a monofilament. This is three strands of, of the nylon fiber twisted together and then they bond it to keep it from separating like your woolly nylon threads separate and would not go through a needle very well. This is fabulous for in the needle when you're using a serger and also it has lots of uses that I mention it in my book a lot. I say sometimes you use it in the needle, sometimes you use it in the bobbin. And the nylon lingerie thread is great for the bobbin for machine embroidery. Try to get these things out of your way. Still want to be able to see. Okay, so I'm going to bring my bobbin thread up through the fabric. The machine is on something. <laughs> We're about to rock and roll with this machine. Lingerie thread is white and black, by the way. And it pretty much reflects colors, so you don't need as many colors of it. A, a, a thing called translucency. Maybe it's the glasses. Maybe it's sitting on my glasses. What's well, under there? I don't see anything. I just have it on batting. <laughs> Happy Thursday, everybody. If you're working on a really big fabric, this would be a time to use one of the quiltlets, which is elastic strap and safety pins. I just totally took my bobbin thread and pulled it right back through. Lower the foot, even though there is no foot. I'm like, something's wrong. I know what it is. There's no handle on the hoop. I'm just going to kind of move this over and expose the little holes on the frame. And you can see that's where I drop the little handle into, and that's how you color with this.
me put my glasses on. I just cut thread, you guys. <laughs> Let's see if I can just start again. Oh, I got away with it. That's so rare. I took my little scissors out of here too. My thread nips. I'll use my medium ones. These are the three hole scissors that <laughs> give you a spot for every finger so that you can cut without hurting yourself. Where did I put this? Well, so much for promising myself I wouldn't take things out of the studio. I only lasted a week. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to do little circles. Because there's yellow there, so I don't need to fill it all the way in. But I want more thread there than I would if I were quilting. And kind of sit there a little bit, and I'm going to hop over here now. Put the yellows. And this time I am going to draw. I'm trying to think of what direction I should be stitching this. So I'm thinking of it as like a feather. It has two sides to the leaf. But I may regret that. We'll see. And the bobbin thread is still connected. So there's no need to bring it up again. No, you know what, Tina? I used my... <laughs> I use the seam ripper to do that, to take the paper off my iron. Okay, so even though this is, I need to kind of refer to what's over here. And while there's a lot of green in that, there is some yellow tones. So I'm going to accept the fact that this is not going to be identical to that. And isn't that neat? Because then you have more than one type of project. Oh, here we go. Also, if you don't like the way the stitch is looking, you might need to re reduce your needle thread tension. And I'm going to outline this. I do. The wind is still too strong and it blew my thread. Let's see if I can get away with it. Looks like I'll get away with it. If I raise the foot, make sure that the... It's not like this is... I'm going to... I'm just outlining it. <laughs> Don't let your air conditioner not work so that you have to use a in-the-window one. If you sit in one spot too long, you'll cut your thread. Your stitches will get really small, and I'm determining my speed by run, how fast I run the machine, plus I steer with this. This hand is just kind of like I'm supporting the paper if I were to draw. Elbows are down, shoulders relaxed. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some yellow here. Kind of keep it the same direction. And you, however fast you go is really entirely up to you. You do not have to go fast. It's good to not go faster than your eyes can see. I need some green. Whoa. Gosh, that air conditioner is just going to be too much. So what I'm going to do because it's blowing my thread is I'm going to take it up and bring it around one of the posts as well. So you can see it actually started to unroute and it went off the thread dispenser and got caught underneath the thread dispenser. So it's really going for a ride. 
But it's 80 degrees in here. I don't know if I can turn that off for very long without getting cranky. Okay, if you ever watched me embroider before, you know I can go a lot f longer than that before I have a thread issue. Well, that's, you'd rather watch it, wouldn't you? I need to pick some green. This is a really cool green color that I used. Some more greens. Boy, I gotta make it easier to thread my machine. So rather than cutting the bobbin thread, I'm going to. Oh, I have another lily pad in the hoop. I should do that one before I move off. Take the handle out of that hole, go over here. And now remember, if you're going, wow, you could hit the hoop, you could, but. I know what I'm going to embroider. I'm embroidering what I can see. I wouldn't put green over on the fish, would I? So that's why where you position the fabric is more important. Tie a knot. I keep feeling like I'm working on the back side. Oh, I didn't lower the feed dogs. I'm going to go ahead and lower them. You don't have to, but. If you have the ability, why not? This machine has been through quite a bit too. The machine is not level. This one doesn't have as much identifying art. <laughs> Who drew this one? See how much better the machine is running just by bringing the thread going up and through that thread guide. I'm going to switch to green. I was going to do the flower first, but I'm having fun with the green. So this is 6480. If you want to know a good color for a lily pad. And then I recommend that you use the thread dispenser to keep the colors you're using for a project in, uh, in a specific order. If you're using it for an embroidery, uh, in an embroidery design, you know how sometimes they have you use three yellows and they look similar? So if you put them in, in order on the thread dispenser, then you won't end up using the wrong yellow. <laughs> How come my stitches go where I want and yours go all over the place? So you're still learning for one, but I'll uh, talk about it a little bit. Help you think this through. One second. I'm thinking about how to explain it because I have shown it quite a few times. Thread the needle. Where's my pad? Come on. Why? Oh, did you already try to thread it? First off, I know the direction that I want to go. I chose before I began. Remember me saying, what direction do I want my stitches to go? If I had them go this way, and then some go that way, 
that's just not getting that you're the one in charge. I recommend that you color on paper and then go on to your fabric because it'll help you to get that it's pretty much the same motion that you're using. You're using this little handle and you're moving your fingers, not your arm. So if you're still like lifting your elbows up, well, that'll make your stitches go all over because we kind of wobble when we sit without anchoring ourselves to the table. Let's see what I've got here. So we have a lily pad. And I chose, I chose before I began that I wanted my stitches to go, to go the same direction as this line. So all of my stitches, I'll move my fingers that direction. And on this side, it's lined up with that one. You could do little arrows like that to help yourself to remember with a erasable pen. But that's pretty much the same motion I'm using when I'm putting this in the hoop except for the needles over here so when I move like that the hoop is moving the fabric does that make sense Amy I highly recommend that you embroider before you quilt because embroidering is more like coloring and quilting is more like tracing if you don't have something to color over or something to trace over then your brain is left to wonder what would you like to do and so you kind of have to have this conversation i am going to let's say amy you're going to go down to phoenix and you got somewhere to go right you don't just go to phoenix and go i'm just going to go there and then you get there and you have no idea where you're going when you're there you have to have a a, a road map a destination and a lot of times when you watch people quilt, especially with these long arms and, or if you're at a show and, and you've ever gotten to try one of them and just zip a do like this. And it seems like there's really no, there's no method to it. It's just, it's just a free flowing movement, but it isn't. They, when you, when you actually make a quilt, you actually have to have a plan. Okay. What shape am I going to do? And embroidery is the same way. How do I want to color in? Do I want to if you're like a two-year-old, two-year-olds draw in all different directions and they color in, in a coloring book and they kind of make a mess. So coloring in a coloring book would be a good idea right before you do this to kind of train your brain, help your brain remember what it is that you do. And then remember that when you're quilting with these, your elbows need to be down and you try to relax your shoulders and your neck and just get really relaxed. Excuse me, <laughs> I got too relaxed. And then while I'm sewing, my elbows are in fact down the whole time. So that helps me be more stable as I sew. I don't need to bring my bobbin thread up because I've brought it up and have not cut it. And I'm going to switch so you can see up close, but I want you to see this is my posture. So you can see this, this hand is resting on the machine and my elbow is kind of on the table. I've learned to be relaxed. I've learned to be really easy on my hands. When I first invented these hoops, I, I was really rough on, on this. I held onto that handle for dear life. My fingers had like the white knuckle look to them. So if you're squeezing on this and you start seeing the white <laughs> underneath your skin, you're pushing too hard. It's a very, very light touch. It's kind of like a really good marker. And now the same direction. And uh, as I was saying, you could do this. Draw a line and put an arrow. So you don't forget. Because while you're doing this, it's distracting. It's so much fun to watch it all happen. You're kind of like a guest on your machine. You're watching in a different way. Usually, 
you're closer to the needle. This time you're away from the needle and you're you're moving what feels like a pen, but you're really moving the paper or you're moving the fabric, not really moving the pen, although you are moving the pen. So to your brain, it's it's very frustrating. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. You guys should all be saying that all the time after watching me every week. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. And the speed of the machine is, in, is up to you. And I'm going to use another green to create more artistic look. And this is definitely one of the most relaxing things that you'll ever do once you get the hang of it and you stop trying to learn. As long as you're thinking and trying to figure out what you're doing, you're using the left hemisphere of the brain. Once you stop thinking, you go into that right hemisphere, which is the more fun part of your brain. Free feeling. Another thing about your brain is sometimes it does all the work for you. When does that happen? Sometimes when you're doing the most complicated thing you can imagine, driving your car, you completely space out and you have no real focus on what you're doing. Especially if you're going to the same place you've been before. If you go to like a convenience store or a gas station and you go there often, you don't have to think very much to go there. And you can, you can have a complete conversation with somebody in the car and not remember the entire drive until you have to focus on getting into the driveway and you have to pay attention to maybe hitting your front end the wrong way in the cur in the driveway. Have any of you ever experienced that where you've arrived and you're like, okay, my hands are on the steering wheel, but I don't remember driving. It's kind of scary, isn't it? But it's really just an efficient part of our brain. The autonomic, and it's where the brain uses both hemispheres of the brain. And you really are released into just relaxation and fun. And the brain's going, I got, I got this. I know how to do this. So if you talk to yourself out loud when doing this, say, I'm coloring. Your brain goes, oh, I know how to color. We color with our fingers. If you sit down and you're holding like this and trying to figure out how to hold your body, your brain is lost with you. Another thing I talk about is making these familiar to you before you use them. And I really am serious when I say it, you know, like to talk to them and go, you're normal. So what if you're an octagon shape? I'm familiar. We're familiar with one another. I like you. You like me? And it's like, yes, I like you. Let's have some fun. So the more familiar you are with these, in other words, the more you use them. So if you were to take a Saturday and not think, I need to make a king size quilt, but rather do something like this and take all Saturday to do it. You're not going to get a sore because you're not going to lift your elbows with this. Elbows are down. So, and then finish, finish that project before you go on to something else. Wait till you really like what you see. And if you don't like the first version, well, crumble up the paper and throw it in the trash. Do another one. I know it's fabric and it matters more to you. But that is how I got good at it was by doing it and doing it and doing it. And, and when I'm at a show, I don't get to just sew. I'm always talking to the crowd, which makes me not pay attention to what I'm doing and made me move along faster. So if you want to move along faster, if you have a movie that you've watched a lot, so much that you can actually say part of the movie. I like Under the Tuscan Sun, which is a great movie for me to listen to because I visualize the scenes and I fill up my room with that or music that I sing to. Something that takes me out of what I'm doing and lets me do something else at the same time. Then you'll be, you'll get better. But you gotta, you gotta start and you gotta not give up on your first project. You gotta keep, keep doing it. And don't expect your work to look like mine in the beginning because mine didn't look like mine <laughs> does now in the beginning. I wonder what was the first thing I did. If I have anything that I can show you that I did at the beginning. 
Of course, I always had embroidery. I did embroidery before I invented the octahoops. So I was, I've been good some, for a long time. So, but nothing I am really good at was an instant thing. I had to practice. I had to do it over and over again. I wanted to get good at it. Just like you wanted to drive bad enough to practice. You have to want this bad enough to try it, to practice. You can't just try it once. Got to keep going at it. I might give you guys some challenges and you go, all right, everybody has to do this design. What do you guys think? Give me hands up if you think this would be a good idea. Cause I belong to artist groups and we challenge one another. We're like, all right, this week it's wild weather. And this week is you choose an actor of, or we actually did the same actor. And uh, if I were to say everybody in the school has to do this this week and it doesn't matter what yours looks like. You got to share it because if you share it, then you then you guys can see that no one's perfect. Not even me. I'm not even perfect. It would be boring to be perfect, wouldn't it? Elbows down, shoulders relax. This hand just rests. This hand does the work but everything is resting. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. Stay awake, Clara, stay awake. I could have some more coffee. I was gonna have to leave early, but I don't have to. La -da -da. So I do normally listen to movies or something while I do work like this. Unless I'm filming and talking while I film to teach you guys something. I listen to movies and I have the, the screen near me. So if I just got to look, I can look up at it. But for the most part, my eye is focused on what I'm doing, but not where I'm at, where I'm going. Because this is a loose style of embroidery, it doesn't matter if we cover it all the way up. But I am going to switch to another green. But not until I do the green over here. Raise the foot to cut the thread. <laughs> I cut it before. Ah. You raise the foot to release the tension on the thread. There we go. And then you cut the thread, which I cut it too quick. The bobbin thread is now stretching out, going across here. It's called carryover stitch. Sometimes I'll carry over the needle thread too, but it's, I always feel like it's more valuable. The colored thread is more valuable than the lingerie thread in the bobbin. It's another reason to use this kind of bobbin, but deco bob, if you have our deco bob bobbins, those work as well for your bobbin. Elbows down, shoulders relax. Keep the stitch direction going the same direction. And I should cut that bobbin thread because it's distracting me, or this needle thread. Machine embroidery is the same as thread painting. Fabric inking is the same as fabric painting, just different techniques. I consider fabric painting to be more like you have paint that's sticky and it doesn't end up soft when you're done. Whereas fabric inking is more of a softer feel. I'm so relaxed. I'm getting yawny. Excuse me. I know you can actually hear my yawns because I can hear myself afterward. <laughs> Elbows down, shoulders relax. Another thing that you tend to do as a beginner is you tend to be uncomfortable and keep going. So right now I'm not comfortable. So I'm going to take the handle out and I'm going to spin this around so that I can see better, be more comfortable.
And figuring out which which hole is the most the one you want is not always easy. That's why I gave you eight locations to put the handle in. And this is where I showed you going the wrong direction, so that stitch direction is going the wrong way, but I can cover it up. Fill the room with some noise. I'm not used to being in total quiet. I forgot to turn off the phone. Hopefully it won't ring. Okay. So now I'm gonna go to the last green. And I also might use a purple ish color to create the shadow. You guys having fun? Any of you sewing along with me? I really wanted to work on my quilt this week. If only I could squeeze a week out of every day. You love that movie too, Amber? I feel like it's been a while. I could watch that this weekend. Maybe I could do that and finish my quilt. So I really want to do that for you guys. Show you how to quilt a big quilt. <laughs> batting. I was actually thinking about teaching you quilting as you go for a table runner. In the meantime, there's definitely a good amount of, it's probably my hair blowing on me. Hi, Sandra. Let's see, is there anybody else I didn't catch? Can't read this while I embroider. This is a baby lock crescendo, Amber. And uh, I have a ever sewn machine on the floor that I really wanted to open up today and just use for this. But I really should do an unboxing and an educational tutorial before I start to use it for my show, but I do plan on using it. It is not computerized. Pretty sure. I forgot its features. This is cub. This is color. <laughs> what color is this? 6482. This is a really nice color for a lily pad. Might be nice to use this gray. So if you have Sharpie markers or any other kind of fabric pens, you could have gone over the ink that we used and enhance certain areas, outline things ahead of time to help you to see better as you're stitching. Since I created this, it's in my mind and a design that I already am familiar with. But it definitely would have been easier to outline everything, even for myself, using different color Sharpie markers. I do have like every color they make of the Sharpie. We have these tiny little itty bitty little gnats up here flying around. I don't even know how they're getting in the house, but they are. There's a tidbit you didn't need to know.
Okay. The colors are relatively close to one another. Remember, I just kind of decided to do this. <laughs> Didn't have it already planned. Didn't get my colors. So it's a good idea to know what you're going to do before. So you can get the colors and have them ready for you. And I left gaps on purpose. Is that looking good? You can see the shading. It's very subtle. I have my needle thread tension at uh, 3.4. My machine's normal at 4. This is a very small decrease in thread tension. A lot of times people immediately reduce tension and then really did not need to. So it's better to stitch and what you want is you don't want bobbin thread coming up to the top. It's another reason to use a thinner bobbin than in the needle because you can lay more thread on the top of the fabric if your bobbin thread is thinner. And our nylon lingerie thread is very thin, even though it's three strands of nylon thread for every strand of nylon lingerie thread. I found a good position, even with the microphone in front of my face. I'm totally relaxed. My elbows relaxed. Now, if I were going to embroider this whole area, I would stitch over. I would just go, D -d 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 -d, and then I'd cover it up. But I'm not. Raise the foot to release the tension, bring it over, and continue. So should I use that gray, or should I use a purple for my shadows? No, you purple lovers are going... Use purple! Duh! <laughs> I don't want to cover that up too much because there's going to be the shadow color in the middle. So how many of you Say I have, uh, say Octi if you have the Octi hoops, or thumbs up if you have the Octi hoops. And if you have them and you're not using them, get them out. Get them out of the drawer. Or pull them off the wall. They're yelling at you. They're going, come on, let's have some fun. Now I'm switching to a darker thread in the bobbin or in the needle, so I'm going to take and put a middle only because it was just ready. Could use the lingerie thread in black as well. This is a deco bob bobbin, it's a 80 weight thread, so it's not as thick as. The 40 weight on the top. No, don't think about your stitches being any particular look or way, Amber, because that just that'll just stress you out. This is embroidery, and this is free motion. So it, it won't look like a computerized machine did it. And that, I think, makes it prettier. So 
So should I use gray or should, should I use lavender? Yeah, that's the whole point, Amber or S Sandra. Is that anyone with the octahoops is supposed to say, I have them, I love them, to help, to help the newbies that are just finding out about it to feel more comfortable with the, the whole thing because I know how you guys are. Oh, she can do anything. She invented it. So, but there are people that have won blue ribbons at shows using our octahoops. Lots of blue ribbon winners. Where's the end of that thread? Where's the glasses? I guess I decided to do purple. If I could just see with the glasses on all the time, I wouldn't lose them. Going with the lavender. Thank God I have this other air conditioner. It's feeling chilly in here. I'm going to check, see if my air conditioner is starting to work. Nope. Oh well, life could be so much worse. We are all aware of that today, aren't we? All right, here we go. Got this. Don't let this happen. Make sure your fabric is never underneath because you could end up stitching it and attaching the hoop to your fabric would be another reason to kind of roll up your excess fabric instead of being as sloppy as I've been. And you could just put a little clip right here or use the elastic straps, the quiltlets. There we go. I'm freezing in here. Need something to block the the uh, air from blowing on me. Lower the foot. If you don't lower the foot, what happens if you don't lower the foot, you guys? So I switched to a darker bobbin because if anything happens that makes my bobbin thread come up, it won't be as obvious as it would be if it were a light color bobbin. Cut that. Have you used them, Brenda? I know you did. Brenda, you did your... You did the sloths inking, didn't you? In the school. Everybody wants to see how it turned out. Did you ever quilt it? Have you been too scared to do it? Is it you? Pretty sure it was you. They were exceptional. They're so cute. Hi, Veronica. I don't know why I took my glasses off to read that. It's so much easier to read with these there. Yeah, the, uh, the nylon thread comes in clear and smoke and white and black. And they're different, but they're, they're all nylon. All right, here I go. Shadows. I'm in the shadows. Need, can't just have light, but I also have dark. 
The slower you move the hoop, the smaller the stitches, the more they drop down into the fabric. But you're also more likely to break your thread with the needle slicing right through it. One of the important things when you go out and come back like that is you don't want to come out and then move and go. You don't want to make a, a triangle. You want to go right back over where you were. Out, and I am going to outline with it. So you see how I'm going right back over my stitching? Right down, come over. An outline is my last step, generally, when I do embroidery. I always, I don't always do anything. However, uh, normal practice for me would be to do the light, me medium, medium. <laughs> light medium colors and then I end with the dark after you do that you could bring in a light highlight color as your very last step and I'm going to sneeze Okay, I put up a board to block the air conditioner from blowing directly on Tinkerbell and I. So, because I was starting to sneeze and that's not good. And now it can tell how cold it is because the air is blowing right on it. So getting the hang of learning, you know, where you want to put your color is also important. You can see I outlined and then I took it in a little bit here too, but I don't want to go all the way from one side to the other on a lily pad because they don't even usually have that, those lines. They're, they're not like that. They're more like this. It's kind of like a lettuce leaf. So you don't really see the vines going through them that much, just a hint now and there. And that light, a light line going across, you know. I, it's easier to ink than it is to embroider and get it to look the way you want. And I'm gonna do the exact opposite of what I said and I'm going to use the lavender and I'm gonna outline this flower. My foot control is stuck on something. Ugh, there's such a mess on the floor. You guys would be like, ah, she's worse than me. Look at that messy floor. And the reason I'm doing this is because I can't really see the detail in this flower right now. Never go faster than your eyesight or you're comfortable with, especially when you're doing an outline like that. And I'm gonna go around the center. Come back out. This feels more like quilting. Quilting is tracing or doing just a line. This is where you would feel more concerned about how your stitches look than embroidery. Remember, my elbows are down, my shoulders are relaxed, and I'm steering with this. That little handle there. And my hand is down on the machine, and I'm drawing with my fingers, not my, I'm not lifting up my elbows, and I'm not pushing down against this frame. It's a very light touch, very slippery. Did I stitch over there? No, I didn't. <laughs> <coughs> I 
I'm going to stitch over here because <laughs> I can hop over now. Elbows down, shoulders relax. This one had a more pronounced vine or vein going across. Well, I'm glad I had the show today. I feel better. Feels good to hang out with you guys. Thank you for joining me this Thursday afternoon. Something like being creative. Creativity, not pretty. It's not as focused as I would like, but I didn't have time to even focus this camera, so I'm pretty impressed with how well it is doing all on its own, and I'll hold it up for you. If you hear loud plucking sound when you run the machine, that's too much thread laid down and you're sitting in one spot too long. Okay. See, now I want to do every lily pad and then I won't be getting to the quilting. And we are at what time? We are at almost two hours. Guys, amazing. How much of that time did I just spend talking? Barely put any thread down. I guess we're just gonna do embroidery today. I didn't say what free motion. I said free motion. I'm gonna finish the lily pad and the flower for sure. I could switch to this and do a little quilting on that as well. Maybe. We'll see. Because here's the thing. I really wanted to teach this and have a... Because I did stitch on this already f with the live show. But I would like to have a focused video on the quilting process of this. And uh, if I do it all live, it's just not the same thing. The cameras aren't as good when we go live as they are when we record. I love the colors. It's just so It's like having all all the all the crayons in the coloring or in the crayon box. I think I forgot to eat. No, I had breakfast. Yesterday I totally forgot to eat. And then it was like 8 and my dog was mad cuz I had Forgot to feed them extra. Tinkerbell never finishes her food. She always has food in her bowl. But you don't need to know these things. Hi, Christina from Michigan. You're going to quilt your first time. Are you using my hoops? Oh, good. Well, I, I could quilt something. I also have another project that hasn't been finished. Right now I'm using them for embroidery and we have a stabilizer on the back. Are you doing a big quilt or a little one? Except for that's just a bunch of pebbles. I used to have a stack of quilt squares and I could do all kinds of shapes for you, but they were from shows that I did. And I stacked them up somewhere and I had it like for Tinkerbell to make a bed out of. And then I put them somewhere. Now I have no idea where they are.
But I do have lots of videos on my YouTube channel. If you go into the Fabrically Speaking Live and you look at anything free motion, it'll be the Octahoops. And, uh, and then there's an Octahoop playlist as well. But we don't cross the Fabrically Speaking Live and then the Octahoop playlist. We don't mingle them. So you would want to look at both. All right, here we go. Let's go. I have my light color. You retracted your message, so I don't know what it was. If you ever have a question and you don't want to ask it live, you can always ask me in the school, and you can private message me in there. Create with Claire Rowley is the school, and it's at create.clairowley.com. It is in the description below the video when it's over. Now, what I should do, and I am going to do, is change back to my light bobbin. Whoops. <laughs> and I'm using the lingerie. I can't remember where I put it. Another thread you can use in the bobbin is the Invisifil. This is a, a hundred weight. Not all machines can see it though, if you have a computerized machine. Your machine may have trouble seeing that thread if it has a, a monitoring system that says, hey, it's time to white a bobbin. But lingerie has some unique qualities because it, it stretches as it goes through your tension. That's why I don't cut the thread in here. I will bring it up. Rather than letting it cut in here because it stretches as you cut and then it can come back and come out of the tension. It's just one of those little annoyances and you're like, how did my thread come out of the bobbin? I don't know how that happened. Why is things like that always happen to me? It doesn't seem like Claire has any issues like that. You have no idea all the issues that happen, especially if I'm stressed out or distracted by something else. I forget as well the things that, uh, that we take for granted. Here we go. So I don't know if you can see how much thinner the lingerie thread is to the embroidery thread. And this is our polyfast embroidery thread that you find at creativefeet.com underneath our thread link. And even though I have, I have a lighter color. Now here's a case where stitch direction matters. Stitch direction for the flower is kind of focused on the point of every flower. So I'm going this direction, then I move that direction, now I'm going that direction, and I'm going to always head, go out toward the petal. If you color in sideways, it totally changes the look of the color of the thread as well. It will make the color appear like a different color altogether. It has to do with how the light hits the thread. Now I'm going to go over this with a lighter color as well. So I'm taking it almost, almost filling it all the way in, but not. And this is the benefit of having the fabric be inked below it or painted below it is that you don't have to fill it all the way in. So you can be a little bit sloppy as you're learning. All the way to the tip. Another thing about this is this is much easier than a zigzag stitch. 
So you notice that I'm not having to spin the hoop around to change direction. I move my fingers in a different direction. If my needle were used, if I were using a zigzag stitch, which a lot of people teach to use for free motion embroidery, with a needle swinging left and right, I would have to keep spinning the hoop around much, much harder to use a zigzag stitch. This is similar to an embroidery machine. An embroidery machine has a needle that goes straight up and down. And then you have a hoop and an embroidery unit that moves the hoop in different directions. So this is the closest thing you can get to a machine embroidery machine technique, but being done with a regular machine. And why it's possible is the shape of my hoop. The shape of the octagon makes the stabilizer totter and it prevents the fabric from puckering and getting sucked in. Because one of the things you're not aware of, or maybe aware, not aware of, is that an embroidery machine changes tension automatically. It's part of the program. So as the hoop moves up, it changes the tension to a different setting than when it moves down. And side to side, a different tension. And it's just constantly changing tension and according to what stitch direction and how far the hoop moves when you swing, if it swings really big, well, it needs a lighter tension. And so the tension discs are opening and closing and moving slightly and moving, you know, a little bit more, a little bit less. But when you have a regular sewing machine, well, there are no fairies inside your machine going, oh, she's going to move the hoop over there. So I'm going to change the tension. And this is the problem with all of their free motion hoop systems is, is they're usually round for one thing. And that causes the, the, uh, well, the, a round object becomes oval if a lot of pressure is applied to it. I have my round hoop somewhere. What we used to teach before I invented these, we use wooden frames for free motion uh, made from teak wood. It's pretty, pretty strong, but we'd stretch the fabric in the hoop and you could stretch it so much that your round hoop kind of come in, came in on the sides. Kind of like Suzanne Summer's thigh master. <laughs> you know, you have it's round and you squish your thighs together and it goes in and out. Well, that's what happens with round hoops. So in order to get your fabric not to become puckered or get sucked into this thread that has a, a tension that doesn't change, that's why the octahoops doesn't allow the fabric to give in. An octagon is, is a stronger shape. So it doesn't bow in. It has more strength. That's one of the cool features about the octagon shape. The other has to do with quilting. And I was going to do another color pink before I move on. We're at four already. How you guys doing? I really wanted to... I love this color. I have to apply it. Are my, is my mascara all smearing? Oh my goodness. I have a new eyeliner. <laughs> I don't think it wants to stay on my eyes. You can't see the... F was the fabric in, in the way? I'll try not to get my hand in the way on this next pink. That's the problem when you only have one set of eyeballs. I can't see what you're seeing. I see what I'm seeing. I do have a big screen showing what I'm doing, but when I'm doing what I'm doing, I can't really look at it. Like this. I, I forget the microphone's blocking my, my face. All right. Halloween table runner. Perfect. I was actually thinking about designing a Halloween thing, something Halloween-y. I had visions of pumpkins when I woke up this morning. I'm like, well, maybe I should do some kind of pumpkin design. 
I was thinking about fall, not necessarily Halloween, but we have glow in the dark thread that makes Halloween theme really fun. So if you don't have glow in the dark thread, you might want to pick some up for that. Although you're about to quilt it. Another neat thing about glow in the dark thread is you can quilt a child's quilt with it. And when the lights go out, their, their quilt glows in the dark. We're sold out of one color, but it's on its way. All of a sudden, everybody's buying the glow-in-the-dark thread. And I really wanted to do a video with, like, a black light and turn all the lights off and see if the camera will work and do something. We'll see. I haven't tested it. I almost did that last year. Okay, I have time to finish. Here we go. Always make sure that you raise the foot when you change your color so that that thread goes in the tension discs. I think I, did I cut the bottom thread last time? Probably not. Well, I'm definitely not in a good spot now. I moved the microphone. Oh, I had a really good, oh, okay, try to keep my hand out of the way, let me tie a knot, I was about to do it all over again, Amy, Yeah, move, move the machine. It's because I'm trying to make it so you guys can see and I have the microphone kind of close. So this is kind of like a quilting design because I'm just outlining. Definitely makes a big difference having that contrasting pink. It's all just drawing. Remember, if you say, I'm drawing, I'm drawing, your brain won't try to pick your elbows up off the table. It'll think more along the lines of moving this instead. Elbows down. Shoulders relaxed. And over here, I didn't have the ink to reference, so I just kind of guessed. So, see that? versus whoops versus that that versus that which one do you like better <laughs> two totally different things that's not a fair question do you guys want me to do a little quilting I already quilted this flower and I actually did it I think with invisible thread because I didn't want to detract from the art so depending on what you're doing determines which thread you want to use which is why we have so many different kinds and thicknesses of thread I really See, I want to also have a video on how to quilt pebbles. And if I finish this other thing that's a bunch of pebbles, then, I, then I'll have to make another thing to show that. 
And this is going to be a how to, I have to save some of the fish. I did do this live though on my show. So if you refer to the one where you see the fish in the, in the, uh, cause when you go into the playlist for fabrically speaking live, which is the live show and you see the thumbnail is what it's called. The little box that represents what it is. Look for this. And then you'll find the free motion quilting over inked fabric, which can be applied to anything. But um, I think that I'm going to end because I'm distracted and and I almost didn't even go live today. Unless you guys are like begging, just do a little mm -hmm. quilting. It's nap time. <laughs> I could definitely nap. Nobody's begging. Well, I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing how you can take your inkjet printer ink and create a design just by printing it out and getting it wet and ironing it onto your fabric i will note i'll be updating oh please sandra said please <laughs> i'm not going to do this one though this is gonna, this is going to be a video so there's a difference between going live and doing a video and then just focused on one particular thing I need to take a sip. I turned on my mic. It should be working. There it is. I want to do this, so I'll just do this. So this is something I inked all by myself with every once in a while my son goes, you really need to just be creative without anyone watching with no video. And when that happens, I do things like this. And now I really want to finish it. I do. So don't feel like you're making me do it. This is just terrible to work on. I love it when my kids tell me to goof off. What should I do? This is the lingerie thread in black. Okay, so what I had, I have some leaves I haven't done. And I think this would be a nice color. All right, now I'm excited. Now I'll just pretend I just started the show and I haven't already been sewing for two hours because it took a while to get the inking. But whenever I do something like this and I didn't film it, I'm like, dang, I should have filmed that. <laughs> Where's the green? What'd I do with it? 
Oh my goodness. Okay, so what you're going to see first off is first, this is a major quilt project where you kind of can call this thread play. It's not just doing feathers or pebbles. It's it's actual the, the print on the fabric becomes an something that I can accentuate with quilting. And whenever I do this where I where I'm going to lay a lot of thread down, I don't back it. See, no backing. And that way I can really get creative with the thread and then if I keep myself focused, I save the outlining for afterward. And then after I've done most of the thread laying down, then you put the back on and then you just quilt a little bit through all three layers. Then when you look at the back side of your quilt, it's just a little bit of thread instead of a lot of thread. That is the best way to handle this type of work. And I'm just trying to make it so I can put my elbows down. I got to step away for a second. I will be right back, you guys. I'll let you look at these side by side while I... That's kind of a pretty mess, huh? If you gotta leave a mess, you may as well leave a pretty mess. I just had to grab another hoop because I don't want to take the other one apart because I'm having fun embroidering it. That's the benefit of having more than one. All right. And the hoops are white, but they did change color. So my, my brain does not want to use the older white. So I couldn't just grab another one. So this is I'm gonna set aside and I can I can embroider the fish. I can do this all embroidery. I have all my other thread colors right in front of me, which is not gonna work. I think I used this purple for part of this. But I sure do love this purple. I'd say this is my favorite. 726 this is my favorite color in the Invisifil line. I tend to use it a lot. So even though I, I make fun of you guys for liking purple, I tend to like it as well. <laughs> I, it was connected to something. All right. When we quilt with the Octopus, we're going to use two frames at the same time. The fabric, when we embroider, is held on by the stabilizer that is included in the kit. So the fabric is actually attached to our stabilizer, and the stabilizer is attached to the frame. So it only requires one frame to embroider, but if we want to quilt, we don't want any stabilizer on the back side. And what determines the size of the frame, you guys? My favorite batting is bamboo, by the way. Number one bamboo outlasts all the other natural fibers. So if you want to make a sustainable quilt, one that will last a lifetime. 
the bamboo seems to not seems to not rot like cotton does in wool. In case you didn't know that cotton and wool rots. I say that so nonchalantly, I realize it might be painful to hear if you haven't heard of that before. Another feature of bamboo batting is it stretches. Well, it doesn't really stretch. This, this is the one that you can find right now at creativefeet.com, the bamboo batting. It has a scrim that is stretchy. And the bamboo itself is fiber, which floats in the air and there's it gets attached to me. It tickles me. Uh, just like your recorders that you play in school that are made from a bamboo reed last for what seems like forever because my grandfather's one was the one I used and then I let my son use it in school. So it was still a recorder even though it is a living thing that died. But cotton is kind of weak, isn't it? It's a little ball of fluff and it immediately starts to rot as soon as it as soon as you pluck it from the plant. So it's a it's a challenge to keep cotton fibers from getting holes in them and other things. Which is one of the reasons they went to polyester for batting was to keep it from decaying inside the quilt. I don't use safety pins to secure my batting to my fabric either because bamboo batting is super static clingy. So that's all that's holding that on. It is amazing on how well they hold together. If you feel that you need to have your fabric stuck to one another. My poor dog got bit by a bug. It's dry. It's bugging her. <laughs> Are you all right, Tink? It's like, ah. I've been putting cedar oil on all of us as we go outside lately because we have so many mosquitoes up here this year. Turn this off. Hey, Tinkerbell. You want to say hi? Come here. Are you cold? Oh, there she is. <laughs> it's somewhere around here. Where is that bite? It's a really annoying thing, isn't it? Yeah, she was moaning in case you couldn't hear her. She feels a little swollen. Poor thing. Oh. Okay, here's your spot. She's got plenty of really soft blankets. So this is our liquid base, and it's a water-soluble stabilizer in a bottle. And it's almost gone. So it's just wet water soluble stabilizer. So what you want to do is if you feel and I, f I feel like I put a little right there because it's because it's stuck right there. So it's just a little it's like like a safety pin, but there's no pin. Cool. It's stuck. But there's nothing that will break my needle. And to ensure that if you're going to, excuse me, I don't usually put that much on. <laughs> a little dot, a little dot, a little dot, and then slide your finger across so that you don't leave a little blob. Very soft. And now that's, gonna, that's it. And um, when you do your back, you do the same thing on the back side. Kept finding my lid, but not the bottle, so. All right, here we go. To determine which frame is the right one on top, it has to do with how big your hand is. So you want the one that's closest to your hand in size. If I were to use this one, my hand is so much smaller. And since we're going to draw, uh, just like we did with the embroidery, we're going to use the handle to, to trace or draw our quilt pattern. If the quilt's in here and I try to move from here to there, I could never do that because my fingers aren't long enough. So that then makes you, oops, <laughs> that then makes you lift your elbow up to get all the way over. So your brain will automatically just go, 
we can't get there without lifting the elbows and your elbows go up and then all of a sudden you're doing really good and all of a sudden you just got really long sloppy stitches and that's from lifting your elbows so for those of you who aren't aware of it when your elbows are up you are no longer attached to the planet in a solid way your tush is on the chair and your chair is on the planet and so that's pretty stable but from your hips up because we're wobbly we we can we can wobble as our when our elbows are up so putting your elbows down stabilizes the top part of your body and stops your head from moving around un, when you're not really aware of it and that moving of your of your head in relation to the needle changes your perspective and causes you to you might be really good on a line and then you move your head a little bit and it moves where your brain if you watched under the Tuscan Sun movie she closes her eyes and looks at a at wine bottles and they move around so the same thing happens and this is why so many people can't sew a straight line because they move their head as they're sewing the line and that changes the perspective and then you end up with like this swervy line so you want to get your elbows down and keep your head still try not to let your head move around <laughs> easier said than done when you're learning something that you haven't done a lot so we are wobbly and because we are we need our table so I'm gonna put the medium size because there are three frames and the way they move together is because of the shape they're all the same angle in the corner and that allows you to lock them together like that even though there's no screws or clamps that's enough to make them move together put the frame sound like that and then you just bring a corner in and you can move them simultaneously see how they move together so with your non-dominant hand just think you're going to bring the V's together in any way you can hold them together any way that feels comfortable to you and that may change you may sometimes do this and you might sometimes do that and I don't tell you how to do it because everyone's brain behaves differently your non-dominant hand holds the frames together your dominant hand rests on the bottom frame that you won't be able to see and then you write with this and your elbows are down and you draw like that so that's what I'm going to do take the bigger of the two frames not the largest because this one's the biggest and put it aside because we only need two to quilt so now you see the smaller frame is is there but you can't see the other frame underneath and this is the training of the brain once your brain gets it you'll be like ah I can't I got I can't I can't cook I can't clean no 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 I got a quilt I'm a I'm gonna quilt you can't stop me a little two-year-old comes out of you and you are gonna be like oh my goodness <sighs> I am addicted to free motion quilting and it is so hard <laughs> it's so hard not to quilt especially when I have something like this all ready to do so I'm gonna bring that bobbin thread up now the principles of embroidery and quilting are different Come on. Ah, where did I put those tweezers? Tweezers, where are you? Oh my goodness. Can't find the other pair. All right, let's see if I can just get it to sew. I got it to sew. Yay. Okay, this is an 8012 needle. When you're learning, you're less likely to break a 9014. But an 8012 will give you a smaller hole. Elbows down, shoulders relaxed. And I'm not looking where I'm at. I'm looking about here. Notice there's no foot on. That's one of the really cool features of the Octahoops is that you don't have to have a foot. 
If you don't feel comfortable not using the foot, then by all means, put the foot on. And sometimes I use it, especially over inked fabric. If there's a lot of white ink, hopefully I'm staying out of the way so you guys can see. Now the faster you move your hands, the longer the stitches are. The faster you move your hands, the closer they are, but it's not a rule. It's really up to you and most people will not <laughs> be looking that closely at your work. Now I'm going to echo quill here. This is a 40 weight thread. Notice I don't lower my needle. And that's the, the number one question <laughs> on my videos. How come you never lower your needle? I don't understand. Well, when there's no foot in your way, you can see where that needle is coming down, can't you? And if you put your needle down, I hate to do this, but good for you guys to understand it. And this starts to move. And since this isn't attached to anything, even with a foot on, when you lower your needle, you create a large hole where that needle is down. Sometimes you can actually bend the needle. It's just really not good because you're gonna skip a stitch if you create a really large hole. Another thing to, to note is if you have your needle set to always stop down, I'm sorry, I got distracted by Tammy's comment. Tammy fries? Is it fries or freeze? Fries, it's fries. I got a t-shirt, quilt, jeans. Jeans circles with five inch square in the center. This one, you're going to embroider on the blue jean circles. I would embroider the blue jean circles before constructing the quilt, unless it's already put together. Oh, are you going to embroider on the raccoons? Are you going to do thread play on the raccoons? I'll tell you what, guys. I would just quilt all the time. I don't really like the sewing of the quilts together. I'd rather someone else piece all my quilts. This is where my, my heart is most happy. Is stitching... Stitching on the fabric or drawing or embroidery. I do love the free motion quilting though, and I never thought I would. Never. Oops. I used to have the hardest time free motion quilting. It hurts physically. You grab hold like this and your elbows are lifted and you're pushing down immediately. I, f I felt un uncomfortable and pain in the tops of my hands. Do you guys feel that? In the neck? Oh. And my shoulder blades, between my shoulder blades, the muscles would just get so tight. And it's because you're pushing down and lifting your elbows. So you're doing like an isometric exercise. Your, your muscles are holding a position for a long period of time and, and they can start to spasm. <laughs> it sounds awful. Doesn't it? Have any of you done it and felt physically like this hurts? <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway. Yes, you can use this on the Singer XL1000. You can do everything you see me do on my show. All of our feet fit your machine as well. And just leave your tension normal unless you have a problem. If you have a problem, you're, you may need to increase your tension. It's not always a, you don't always have to lower the tension. Sometimes you have to increase it on the top. We try to leave our bobbin tension alone. So if the bobbin tension comes up to the top, we need to lower the needle tension. If you cannot get your bobbin thread to not come up, and I don't think your, your machine is a problem. It was be the Singer's before the XL1000. We couldn't get the bobbin tension. They had this floating bobbin and the, bobbin tension was problematic. So using the nylon lingerie thread in the bobbin, just doing that alone causes the bobbin tension to increase without doing any adjustments. Just the thread itself, the behavior of the thread going through the tension does that for you. And you could use the, the monofilament thread as well in the bobbin and that will also grab the tension. It drags through the bobbin tension which increases bobbin tension without you having to adjust that 
And uh, so leave your needle thread, needle tension alone unless you have a problem. It's not always, it's not a given that you're always going to need to reduce that. You like my space? I love having a space. It's, I, I'm surrounded by all my, all my, all my fiber art. You should see the rest of the house because I'm a fine artist. So my ho my house is a gallery. I'm probably going to do like a tour. When you did the t-shirt, did you back it first to take the stretch out of the t-shirt, Tammy? So if you do a memory quilt, is what they're called, you're supposed to back it with a fusible permanent stabilizer, the t-shirts themselves. Keep in mind that the t-shirt is a cotton, so this will make it last longer as well, and use a polyester or a nylon, would even be better, a nylon uh, fusible on one side stabilizer, and then you iron the back of your t-shirts, and that makes it not stretch. It'll stretch a little bit, but not as much. If you make a t-shirt quilt and you don't do that, your t-shirt will eventually get all stretched out. Just like you can stretch out a t-shirt and wear it and then it gets washed and it shrinks back up again. So we want to stop that behavior in the shirt and that's why you do that. You're from Finland. How nice. Greetings. May we all be blessed and may the world get back to normal. Get some semblance of sanity back in our lives. In the meantime, we will create beautiful works and hang out every Thursday at 2 o'clock. Here we go. Whoops. <laughs> Why is this not happening? There we go. Does this seem like I'm closer? I guess it's because the object is bigger than I'm doing. So I'm just following the pattern that that I inked, because I did ink this with our inks that you find at creativefeet.com. And when I say ink, look for fabric paint and textile paint as well. So this is what is super fun about this is I can do whatever I want. I could go ahead now and do the little stemmies. <laughs> but when you're quilting, you don't want to do a lot of stops and starts and tying of knots. And I got something stuck. There we go. Oh, I was going to say, if your machine is set to always stop in the lowered position, what happens is as the machine, as you're quilting along, and as soon as you start to release your human foot from the pedal, the machine drops into a lower gear. Now, this is not true of every machine. If you have one of those uh, t long arm, what do they call them, mid arm machines, those are more sensitive, but your your human foot is on the pedal. And as you start to release it, the machine drops into a lower gear, slows down like instantly. So if your hands are moving fast when you start to release your foot, the needle will just all of a sudden instantly slow down and it stubs its toe and causes you to break needles. So you will break more needles if you use needle down option than if you don't. So this is me doing an echo quilt design going around still debating on what I want to do after this I might go back around again even though there's no green there because this art you guys you can do whatever you want and nobody will judge you for it okay so that's the green and now you can leave the bobbin thread connected and switch to another color and stitch out there. I do have to eat. I'm starting to get really hungry. Oh, 
I'm gonna do a little more. So I'm starting to get my bobbin thread coming up. I'm gonna lower my tension on the top. But I think it's mostly happening because I have an 8012 needle. Should be using a 9014. Because 40 weight thread. But it's not as noticeable because I used a color in the bobbin that almost is the same as the color on the top. But if the judges were looking at it, they go, look at that, her bobbin thread came up. Darn judges. How dare the judges be so judgy. The biggest prize that I'm aware of was a $5,700 prize. So instead of doing the normal traditional stem, I did that geometric shape. I'll give you a better look at it in a second. I'm going to skip over and it'd be really hard for a judge to see what I just did. I'm not pushing down, you guys. And I'm following the ink, the flow of the color. It's too late for me to use this one as a fabric for you guys because I quilted it already. Can you see that? Let me just cut it. So what you can do is cut this thread long and bring it to the back, especially since you haven't backed it. There we go. And then you can take a hand sewing needle and pull it through. But you can also kind of pull on your bobbin thread. Don't break, don't scratch the tip of the needle. That's the number one reason I have to change needles when I quilt. So we got our bobbin thread. Just kind of pull on your bobbin thread. And look at that, the needle thread comes right through. And that will be a no evidence of a start or a stop. See that? And this was what I did the last time we played. And so this, I don't think the camera was as good as it is now when I did this, but I really would like to make that look better. I don't really like how it ended up. And you can see this one I left kind of blank, but I could come over with this color now and enhance this to make it be more cohesive. Do you ever, you know, I do have embroidery machine. It's in the closet. <laughs> Some of you will be really upset with me. I have a destiny in the closet sitting on the ground. And it's it's not been used because I haven't painted it yet. I started painting it, I think. Actually, no, I, I didn't start painting it yet. But I do plan to show you how you can use our stabilizers to embroider to make your embroidery better. But honestly... I, it takes so much longer to get ready to embroider using an embroidery machine. And the object of my channel is to show you my products because I'm the inventor of this hoop that makes it possible for you to embroider. And, but um, like I said, I am going to show you guys how to use our stabilizers, the stick and tear and the cover up, which blocks the color of the fabric from showing through. Um, one day I'll show you, but I'm probably going to do some of the most challenging things you'll ever do with your machine kind of videos rather than just embroider. It's kind of boring for me. Push a button, have it sew. 
It's not my style. I like to make the sewing machine sit up and beg and and beg for more because it's so much fun to go outside of the automatic functionality of a sewing machine. I've uh, been teaching for for 40 years. Yeah. Nope. 39 years. I think I'm done, you guys. I'm going to have a smooth exit. Got my finger on the button. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I sure hope you'll do so today. Don't forget, I have a free online school, Create with Claire Rowley, where you can ask me to advise you on things like how to get the best result from your embroidery machine. I don't care what you ask me. What I do on my live show is really up to me. It's up to my mood. And then uh, be sure to meander through my YouTube channel for other techniques and things that I've taught. It is hot in here because the air conditioner is not working today, even though it's brand new. And I'm losing it because of it. You have a baby like Destiny? The Destiny 2. I was thinking about filming me painting the Destiny. Do you know how much real estate is on that machine? That's a lot of area to paint. And uh, this one is painted all the way around. I also have the, the big table that goes around it, but I barely ever use that. I think I've never used it, actually. <laughs> the Octaheaps work so great. You don't, need, you don't need a big table. Even when you're quilting, I can do it with a free arm only. All right. You, I love you guys so much. You have a wonderful weekend and may the world may the world be a better place when we see each other next Thursday at two as Fabrically Speaking Live is every week at two o'clock Mountain Standard Time. Bye.